Hey guys, I am extremely excited today. Reason being, the RD350 finally has a Kerala number. It is registered in Kerala. Now I can start taking the bike out. So this is the number for the bike. And we have a new friend. So this new guy joined us last week and he actually jumped this ledge from here till here and due to which here this poor guy has sprained his leg so we took him to a vet and the vet told that it is just a sprain and it will be okay in a couple of days so he started walking well now wish him recovery and also we haven't named it yet our previous boxer was called casper so i was thinking that i will name this one also casper but uh, my wife is against it so probably we'll have to think of a new name so this is the petrol for the rd350 the tank was bone dry so i have to fill the petrol and then start the bike i might not be able to do a ride video today because it's a little late now but yeah so in other news this is the rxz parts that you see so the prob problem with Kerala is these people who do these jobs are extremely lazy. So he just told me that he cannot powder coat unless and until I just strip everything, all the paint off. So this took me about 5-6 days to strip because I first of all do not have time. Secondly, it is a time consuming process. So we tried everything from applying uh, paint remover to applying applying frame flame and nothing worked and then finally I have to go through the good old way of using an angle grinder and a cut off wheel i mean uh, not a cut off wheel a uh, uh, wire brush to get rid of that also i have to clean the entire thing so we have some construction happening here so this is going to be the new dog house uh, those are the three bikes uh, in the middle is the RD350, that's the RX135, which is going to go into restoration after this one. That is the Shogun. Uh, another news is that the Shogun is sold. It is going to a very good auto enthusiast. He has got a little connection of his own. So the reason why I agreed to sell this bike is because... Um, I'm getting another one so that is gonna happen in some time and the bike that I'm getting is a survivor bike this bike has been with the owner for almost uh, uh, 20 years now he last used the bike in 2012 so that is going to start working so I have to start packing this bike uh, I'm definitely going to miss it but the new owner is going to have more fun because first of all I don't ride it much uh, my daily is that guy over there uh, that also I don't get much time so that is the reason why I thought of letting this one go so I'll restore another one this time it's going to be a complete stock restoration wherein you know I'm not going to go overboard like I went on this bike uh, similarly the 5 speed was once restored I spent close to 50,000 restoring it and what you see is the situation of the bike after the first restoration so everything that you see on this was new when I restored it the shock observers the rear mud guard the sari guard everything so yep that happened so yeah without further ado let's start working on the RD350 so I'll get the bike out and then We'll see how it goes. Installing the number plate is easy. Just make sure you scrape the old double tape. Apply some plastic primer and then stick the new double tape. On top of it, you stick the number plate in and then apply the frame on top of it. This frame is slightly different. It doesn't screw into place. You'll have to stick it. And for the rear number plate, just bolt the number plate into place. I'm using two 10mm bolts. Put the number plate in, close the frame. 
So finally, I am going to pour some petrol into it. So that was roughly around 4 liters of petrol. So now let us turn on the fuel tap, wait for the good old fuel to flow into these, yeah it is flowing and then once the fuel is all filled. Let us see if this whole girl will fire up. Moment of truth. Starting an RD350 is not an easy job. It will break your back. Especially since there are two cylinders and both has maximum compression. So all you can do is just keep kicking and absolutely nothing happens. But yeah, luckily I decided to stop and investigate further. So this old girl did decide to throw a spanner. If you can see, uh, let me just take you guys under the light and show you that brown gunk that you see is petrol turning into varnish. So, yeah, we need to clean both the carburetors. So, what I am going to do is I am going to use this carb spray and this microfiber towel to clean this. So, it is simple, just spray liberal amounts and clean the internals and throw the waste out and then wipe it with a, a rag or a microfiber towel. So, yep, that is it. Now, I have to repeat it on the other carburetor as well. So, I cleaned out all the bad fuel from the right side carburetor and then I checked there was absolutely no spark and then I decided to investigate further one wire that I connected last week was disconnected. It was easy. So just connecting it created the spark. So let us try. firing on one cylinder now. So let me just tune her and then oh, she is running reasonably well. I just need to adjust the idle. This cylinder is firing, the right cylinder is firing a little bit more than the left one. So I will just do the idling adjustment and then probably take it for a small spin. Guys, I cannot explain how excited I am. Whew. So 
my hands are still shaking <laughs> from the ride i'm not ballsy enough to push it but i did some triple digit speed today so it was awesome you know i am back i love this bike and this bike actually tried killing me once it has put me in the icu for four days but you know this experience is beyond anything that i have ever experienced so it was truly amazing pops and crackles awesome so the bike actually requires a little bit of work like you know i'm planning to get the silencer chromed and also i'll do the uh, um, shock absorber springs chromed other than that the bike doesn't require much of work it was an overwhelming experience to ride the bike yes i'm also getting rid of those ugly looking mirrors at the time when i bought those they looked awesome but yeah now after four or five years they have lost it so yep so i'm going to put the bike to sleep today and tomorrow hopefully i'll take it out or maybe saturday and then we'll shoot a ride video so it was just simply amazing it makes a lot of noise so the little puppy is scared and he is inside the house but you know i i cannot explain how amazing this entire ride was so again thumbs up to everybody who helped me get the paperwork done and it's simply an awesome experience so i'm just waiting for the rc to arrive i have got the number so the rc will arrive maybe in a week or two and after that we'll start taking this out regularly i'll also do a bit of detailing the rims are little corroded other than that the bike is awesome yep i also need a new battery um, so i'll just quickly run you guys through the things that i have put on this bike this bike actually has a flat slide carburetor it has chinese flat slide carburetors it has chinese cylinders which have been combo ported um, the chinese cylinders actually come in a size which is slightly bigger than the ht and it's uh, smaller than the us spec so it can be ported up to the us spec so i have combo ported it in such a way that the power delivery starts at 3000 rpm and it screams till 9000 10000 rpm so simply amazing the rev counter on the bike is just till 10000 rpm it goes beyond that but you know that is where the size of the balls matter uh, and i'm definitely getting old for this bike so again it was awesome and i'm hoping to share more videos on this bike uh, since this bike's paperwork is done now i can take it out have fun with it and yep that's it so thanks a lot for watching this video and sorry for not uploading for almost two weeks now been busy with some work at home and office so yep i'll i'll try to upload videos more frequently all right thanks a lot for watching have a great day great night bye bye